Whoa, is it that time already? It sure is. That's all right. I'm ready. How about you? Great. Let's get this ball rolling. I'm John Zadar, in case you didn't know, and this is May 11th. It is Wednesday. I know what day it is, and you're watching On Top and Hot. And that's what we do here. We look at stocks that are on top and hot. And today, I was literally following those stocks on the OTC market. Not that there was a lot happening today, but there's always some stocks running. And these stocks each have their own catalyst. And they've got lessons we can actually learn from them and use later. So, let me show you what I got. First stock we are taking a look at is ABQQ. This is AB International Group Core. And of course, we're doing our initial due diligence, that's right, on the otcmarkets.com website. Simply because it's updated every day by FINRA and the SEC with the information we're always looking for. So why go looking for it anywhere else? So ABQQ finished at a great price today, 0.011, just over a penny. Buy it a penny, when it hits two cents, the very next digit you've doubled your money. It's three cents, you've tripled your money, and on and on and on. So buying in on the one is the fastest gain you're probably going to get. She finished today just over 64%. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the QB, the better tier. It's better because you've got to audit your financials to exist here. Pinks do not have to audit. They can, but they don't have to, and it costs money, so most of them don't. And the numbers we get when they file, well, those are numbers they give us, and we just gotta take their word for it. These numbers from a QB stock have been looked at by a CPA, so we know they're legitimate. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent. That's good, we like to see that. They're also delinquent on their filing. That means they're late filing. That ain't a good thing. We'll probably be able to get a little bit of a peek at that when we look at disclosures. So what does this company do? Well, they work with intellectual property, primarily movies, TV shows, even on the internet, and they're doing a lot of business over in China. However, they are here in New York. Now, this company had news come out two days ago. There was no catalyst today, but it was the only news, and it seems to be the only thing that's got this thing running from what I can tell. And I've been over at Twitter, and I've done some searches. But I want to show this to you because it is a Chinese company, really, that's doing business in China, but exists here in America and won't get taken down, right? So, uh... And when you read the news, you can tell it was written, and I don't mean to be rude, but you can tell it was written by someone who's not real familiar with English. It's not exactly laid out perfectly, but we can still get the drift. So that's primarily what they do is they have the rights to films and TV series, and they sell those rights to others, and they make money selling these intellectual properties. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does 2.1 million, today she did 7.7 .7 million. So she's done about three times as much. She doesn't have a low float by any means. Uh, about 216,000, that comes from the unrestricted shares. Not super high, but it's not great. Financials over here, they are making money. It's a little erratic. It looks like $115,000. Take those three zeros, put that behind there. That was for, ooh, and I think that may be the case. You see that? The eighth of last year. Let's look at their disclosures. Now we can see down here, this is last month NT 10Q. Now a 10Q is a quarterly report. An NT means they're late and they can't file. An NT is just a form to file your excuse. So they filed an excuse here and they are late. So it was, Oh, goodness. Uh, I don't know why this one isn't showing up. That's January, and the financials were only showing up to there. Now, that's an annual. Let's actually check the quarterly. See if they show us some quarterly. Uh, no, we're still back to the eighth, and they weren't making very much money. They were even negative at one point. Very interesting. So, the company did have news today, which is really why we're here. Uh, let's see if we can find it right there. AB International Group announces April updates. Not a real eye catcher, is it? <laughs> but there was something in there to be learned. They tell us here that AB sells its two films, On the Way and Too Simple, broadcast rights of mainland China in the end of April. 
AB continues to own internet broadcast rights excluding mainland China. AB acquired 20 episodes of the TV series New Sitcom. The company held 65 movies and 90 episodes of the TV series Sitcom at the end of April. And that's what they're making their money on right now, supposedly. But they've got a couple other things going, but they're not yet going, and it sounds like they're not sure when they're going to get going. AB plans partnership with service provider to allow movie owners to roll out their movie NFTs. Because movie sci-fi, amazing data, is currently create and production. I'm not sure what that means. AB partners with movie sci-fi amazing data project have been delayed. The Amazing Data Movie NFTs drop has no timetable for made available to NFT MMM users on the platform. And then they have one more piece of news here, which was actually in their description. AB's first cinema, the Mountain Kisco Theater, located at 144 Main Street, Mount Kisco, New York, because the cinema is not finished, decorate and repair all facilities, has no timetable for reopening. So I'm guessing that this, comp this company, Sci-Fi Amazing Data, is still creating and producing the NFTs. I think that's what they're trying to say. And they're not ready yet to distribute them out, not even the airdrop. And then they've got a movie that they're releasing in a movie theater. And it sounds like the movie theater is their movie theater in New York. And it's not repaired or decorated yet. Once it is, they're going to be opening that up. So that's all pretty interesting. You might want to go back through all the news. We're not going to do a deep dive here. We just want to see why it was running. And then we want to look at the chart. So let's go look at the chart. So this is a BQQ six month, four hour chart on TOS. That's Thinkorswim. It's a free trading platform you can get just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. They're not gonna ask for any money. You don't really even have to trade with them, but keep your account open and you can use this just like I am. So this looks a lot like most of the stocks we see, high bubble in this corner, low bubble in that corner. Just over four cents and down to double zero four. So there's over a thousand percent difference there. She's been under the 200 most of the time, had some activity here, and I did go look at the news to see if it correlated with any of these spikes. No, I mean, there is news before it or after it, but not on those days. In any case, she did rise above it and came back down, hit that low bubble maybe a week ago and shot up today, right? Now the news came out two days ago, one, two. So it came out on this day, which that's not a big jump, not really. And today it jumps and I couldn't find any tweets. Doesn't look like there's any technicals here that were really set up. So I don't know why it waited to jump today. Now there could be more information somewhere out there. I'm not saying I did a deep dive on the company, but what I normally do, I couldn't find anything. All the technicals did take a big jump up and you can see, wow, look how long she was under the signal line, the floor here, and she just came above it, just came above it. So that's a good, good sign. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. Wow, look at that jump. So she was on the 50, fell away from it, came back to the 50, fell away and hit that low, back to the 50. She really likes the 50. And here she went sideways back to the 50 and then today she took off. And the only thing I can see is this, folks. You can see that starting to turn up. This is the 200 day haul. This is a 200 day average line. It takes 200 days, averages them all. But ah, you got a simple average. That's why they call it a simple average. But this is a haul. It takes all that same information, averages it together, and puts more current attention to prices now. So you get a different line. You can kind of think of this as a long-term 200 and a short-term 200. And this is turning up. So that's the only thing I can see that's real big. Now, everything is starting to turn up. Our technicals are very strong, of course, because she was running all day. Let's come in on that five day, five minute. Whew. So she wasn't really doing anything. I mean, here's today. This is yesterday. And that was the day the news came out. So you had a jump and it jumped what? About uh, that's double zero six to 0073. Not, not far, folks. We're lucky if we got 10% out of that. And then it fell at the end of the day and fell even further after market, pre-market activity and opened up with a bang. No catalyst. 
boom, shot out the barrel and took off. This is at 0 .011. It is, what time did we got there? 12.30 in the afternoon. So that was a long runner today for sure. And she kept most of her gains. If we draw a line from where the surge started and where the surge ended, Look for the spot right in the middle. You can figure it out mathematically or just eyeball it. And if she doesn't come below this when she falls, she's probably going to stay up there. And if she stays way above the 50% loss, because that's what it is, goes up, comes down 50%. And I expect that. I expect that. So if it comes down to this point and I'm in the stock for, well, at least a swing or a long term, that's a perfect position to come back down to. But this is even better. That's better than perfect. Staying up. However, if it comes below that line, there's a very strong likelihood it's going to fall to the next strongest SMA. It may not be on this time frame. You may have to go back or forward to see where it is. But that's probably what would happen. So this looks real good right now. She's actually pushing up after market. I bet that squeeze out just at the very end that is just at the end of the bell just squeaked out we see everything we got a crossover right there MACD the RSI RSI is at 57 it should be at least 60 but this is in a great position it's pointed up which is always a gain when it's pointed up your price is going up when it's pointed down your price is going down it's just that simple and when it's in the right color Red's bad, yellow's neutral, and green is good, and above green is excellent. So this looks good, folks. Action, look at that volume. How did I miss that? Holy cow, what a spike. At the end of the day, everything pushing up. I think this was gonna run in the morning, folks. I mean, it hasn't had a ton of volume. It's not going crazy. However, that very last five minutes it did, and it verified it just a bit afterwards. So everything really looks good on this one for a continuation to run tomorrow. But even in saying that, you might want to do some more DD and see if she's got some growth to go off of that low bubble. Let's go take a look. <laughs> take a look at the next stock, which also has a Q in it, but for a different reason. Now, as I said, this stock has a Q in the ticker as well. The reason I make a big deal about that is it's not part of the ticker. The ticker of this company is CELP, but they have added a Q to it for the time being, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. The company's name is Cypress Environmental Partners. They finished today at six and a half cents, just under 5% gains. Not a big gain, I know. It was a lot bigger earlier, but it really isn't about the run she had or is going to have tomorrow that we're looking at this for. You see, she's pink. She's current. But there's no information here. There's no information down here. And there's a lot of information that is missing. The reason is because of that cue. That cue signifies that the company filed for bankruptcy. Now, I don't know when. It wasn't today. Matter of fact, most uh, times I see it when a company gets a cue put onto their ticker the first day the stock runs. Gets a big jump. I don't know why that is, and I don't play them. But of course, in due time, these stocks fall, fall, fall to really low prices. Now, you're saying, well, of course they do. They're going out of business. Who wants to invest in that? Well, the truth of the matter is most companies that file for bankruptcy don't go bankrupt. No, they then file for restructuring. They go get help to take care of their debts and their liens. They go to the courts, get approval, and get a fresh start. And that's what's going on with this company. And the chart is a juicy chart to look at. So what does this company do? Well, we don't have any information here, but I did poke my head into a piece of news, and they tell us that Cypress Environmental Partners is a master limited partnership that provides essential environmental services to the utility and energy industries, including pipeline and infrastructure inspection, NDE testing, and inline integrity support services throughout the United States. Oh, Cypress also provides environmental services to upstream and midstream energy companies in, and their vendors in North Dakota, including water treatment, hydrocarbon recovery, and disposal into EPA Class II injection wells to protect our groundwater. Our groundwater. I wonder if they're from uh, North Dakota. Uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is where they're from. So you got an idea of what they do and they did have that news come out today. So what was the volume around it? 
not a huge increase not much at all we went from 281,000 shares to 343,000 shares what is the financials for the company considering that you filed for bankruptcy oh that's not what I was expecting 314 million dollars remember we got to take those three zeros this is a pink this is a pink oh my god they must have got drop down here from the NASDAQ or something. $314 million in 2018. At the end of last year, end of last year, they had $117 million in revenue. Now they pay a lot for it. They only ended up with $15 million as their net gains out of all that. But still, that's a good chunk of change. Not good enough, obviously. What about their disclosures? Anything new over here? Well, yes, we do. We have something that came out today. An 8K tells you about material changes, normally important news. This could be a merger, an acquisition, or it could be on May 6, 2022, Cypress Environmental Partners entered into a restructuring support agreement with Ape v. Cypress, a Tulsa-based private equity firm. And that is actually what the news says too that's the wrong piece of news that one right there that came out today the company announced the next step in its previously announced plan to pursue a court supervised restructuring on may 8 2022 they tell us that the plan was filed with the u.s bankruptcy court for the southern district on may 8 the reorganization transaction will provide the reorganized company with a fresh start and that's all it is folks the company was going downhill looked like it was going out of business Business. most people thought it was going out and gone forever and ever and ever and then this pops up so she jumped today but she jumped on a different ticker that's right they actually changed the tickers and I'm going to show you the differences between them right now as we go look at this chart all right this is CELP not CELPQ which we will look at here in just a minute it is the same chart but they are separated this doesn't show the last two days the last two days are on the CELPQ chart, so we have to look at both of them. I don't know why they do that. It's a different ticker. Maybe that's why. This is the six-month, four-hour chart. You can see she had a huge jump here, and that happened on what day was that? That was the 7th. Now, I looked. There was no news. This is a couple days before earnings. So maybe people were getting in thinking that the earnings were going to be good. We saw the earnings are good. So maybe that's what that was all about. And then it fell fast behind that. And this, I'm not quite sure what this is, folks. This may have been when they announced the bankruptcy. She fell all the way down to the 200 before this breakaway. Went sideways, broke again down, hit that low bubble of 27 cents, bounced up, and has been sitting right there all of this time. Technicals are getting stronger we are at the signal line now on the four hour you can see she's been climbing for over a month the rsi has been climbing steadily up as has the cci let's come down to that 20 day one hour view not real good there we had a high here about 18 days ago of a dollar 62 and right now as i said we are about 48 cents she had that huge fall here Another fall and has just been going sideways. Now, everything actually looks good. I mean, I'm not actually proposing that this is going to run tomorrow. However, the company does have a fresh start. We see they know how to make money and normally have lots of money coming in. So, looking at this right now, I can see that she is approaching the 200 coming off of the 50 day SMA. She was sitting on that hard and she is pushing away an aftermarket period right now. The 200 day haul you can see is turning up as well. So everything is coming to that point to move upward. We are above the signal line. The blue is on top. We are above the 60 on the RSI and we're in the green on the CCI. Actually looks pretty good. Now I don't think we're gonna see much on the five day, five minute. Let's see what we get. What day is this? That's the 6th, okay? Today's the 11th, so that's the 6th. That doesn't much help us. So I'm going to throw that Q on the back end of this ticker, and there is uh, the last two days. So this is the 10th and the 11th, and the chart there stopped on the 6th. So the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, and I'm sure there was weekend there maybe, <laughs> but in either case, those days are not here. This is where it picked up, and in the morning, it took off, and it was up here, and 
from what I could see, it was really running. But you can see, she fell from as soon as she got on the board, back on the board, she was gone for a few days, she fell. Now maybe people panicked. Maybe people panicked because, hey, where's my stock? It's gone for four days. I can't find it. It's not running. How come it's not running? I mean, seriously, people really freak out when their stock disappears. So this fell fast today and it has gone sideways. And it, we don't have any lines here because this is a fresh chart. We just had a 50 come into play here and we're underneath the 50. As a matter of fact, we're underneath everything. But it looks like she wants to come up. However, this chart, this chart here looks pathetic. Under the signal line, RSI under 50, CCI down near the red. So looking at this chart, it stinks. Looking at the other chart, it actually looks like it wants to come up. Now with the news today, who knows what's going to happen. But the point is, you want to get into these bankruptcies before you find out they're restructuring normally. But once you find out they're restructuring, well, you know there's no place to go but up. They're in business again. So if this is their low, if this is where they went, you may want to consider this company. Some more DD could give you a real strong payout. Now this next stock did have news today and it was big news, but more important than that, it was the first piece of news they've had in eight years. Not a single stitch of news in all that period of time. This is WPKS World Poker Store. They finished the day at two and a half cents with over 85% gains. Now they are on the pink tier, but they are limited information. This means they're late filing and that can be very serious. Now they're not in danger yet. We know if they're in danger because the OTC market will put grace period in yellow right here. Grace period means they have 15 days to get things right or they're going to the expert market. Now the expert market isn't a delisting, it's a timeout. You get pulled off the open market so that your shares can't be bought or sold for the most part and you're over there until you catch up with your filings and then you come back on the market. So we don't see that here but we know they're late and we'll get some more information when we actually look at the disclosures. They've got a verified profile but they do not have a transfer agent verified. And this is something you want to see over here. Transfer agents are important, I guarantee it. Matter of fact, I got a letter today from High Times. High Times sent me a letter telling me they got a new transfer agent. Now High Times is not on the market. They were supposed to go on the market back in 2018 or 19 and I invested in it pre-IPO. and. We expected it to run and surge, but what happened was, as far as I can gather, High Times got busted selling shares illegally pre-IPO, and they were told they could not sell them, they were still selling them, and they got a fine. They didn't want to pay the fine, so they just stopped the IPO and kept all of our investment money, all of it, for all these years. So they sent this to me today to tell me that they have a new transfer agent. They went private. They're making millions of dollars doing business with lots of cannabis companies that are on the open market. So maybe they've made enough money now to pay the fine and get back on the market. But in either case, transfer agents are important. So we do want to see that over there sooner rather than later. Now I'm not quite sure if this description is up to date. I mean they've had no information here for eight years. But what they tell us is the World Poker Store is engaged in developing a comprehensive technology platform based on blockchain technology to provide supply chain tracking for all types of products, services, and merchandise sold to end user consumers. So I guess that's what they do. But they did have news today that was very specific and good. So what was the relative volume around this company? Pretty good. I mean, relatively speaking, she does normally less than 5,000 shares a day. Today she did almost 100,000 shares. So close to 20 times her volume, which is not bad at all. Her share structure, what do we got over here? Uh, don't know. Um, that's from 19, uh, 19. That's from 2021. I don't want to take that unrestricted. I'm going to have to look this up too. WPKS. Hopefully I find it. Hopefully I remember. If I do, I'm going to throw it right up there for you right now. Is it there? God, I hope I remembered. So they have 79 million outstanding shares. What about their financials? Doubt they have anything. 
all right we don't see anything here at all disclosures how late are they now these are their disclosures their financials down here are their other sec filings so let's see what we got here uh annual report that was put in for th this is the period that they filed for so that is the end of the year for 2021 they put in an annual report obviously they don't have the january february march they don't have the quarterly report so they're missing the quarterly report here so it looks like they're only one one behind right now and that shouldn't be a problem to catch up with so what is the news today so the headline in the news tells us world poker store signs letter of intent to merge with genuine marketing group inc world poker store on may 9th 2022 signed a letter of intent to negotiate a definitive agreement for a merger with genuine marketing group so it hasn't happened yet genuine marketing group or gmg is a retail and consumer focused marketing company which pretty much aligns with their description right that creates brand affinity and builds consumer confidence through its proprietary authentication system zp tag combining the user-friendly engagement of a smartphone app with the smart contracts of IBM blockchain GMG seamlessly integrates brand marketing and measuring consumer sentiment into the everyday consumer shopping experience so you've got two companies here that are both basically doing the same thing they are marketing to the consumers and keeping tabs on all of the information that's generated from the marketing they're looking for that sentiment everybody wants to know how the people feel so that is what went down today this was the news there has been no other news as a matter of fact just so you can see here get out of my way there is today's news may 10th 2022 uh actually that was yesterday wasn't it sure was that was yesterday and then here 2014 all the way back so you don't have any more news except this deal that they're about ready to make so let's go take a look at that chart and see how 85 percent looks at the end of the day so looking at WPKS six month four hour chart now keep in mind two things one this company hasn't been doing much of anything at all and their shares their volume has been really minuscule under 5,000 a day until today so this is the six month four hour chart we don't even have a 200 day on our six month chart that shows you how little volume is actually traded so the 50 day is our primary SMA here she started out on it she ended on it <laughs> crossed it once dead center in the middle very strange but really she's just going straight across isn't she I mean if we draw a line right and I'm looking here as the main area we draw a line right there you can see she is pretty much not left her zone she was high at about seven cents here she had a low a few days later at double zero five holy cow what a drop that was from over seven cents to half a penny goodness gracious uh, the MACD has got a crossover right now and is starting up and both of the other technicals the RSI and the CCI are both looking strong on the four hour let's come down to that 20 day one hour view oh god see that's th this is like one trade a day one trade a day and I'm using the Heiken Ashi which fills in all the gaps so you don't have lines so this has really really been low matter of fact look the only SMA we have on the one hour chart is the 10 day we don't have any other one here and the five day is gonna look even bleaker folks I didn't look at any of this before I showed you so you've got a company here I'm gonna back out because there's just nothing to look at there no I gotta go even further all right so we had a low back here of triple zero five right now we are at two and a half cents she jumped from uh, about a penny three to a, almost two five two six so almost a hundred percent today before her pullback which put her at 85 percent sitting at the 
50-day SMA right now, which is her top dog. That's what she's got to work with. So everything actually does look, I mean, on this chart, looks like it's starting. I mean, just starting. So you got to keep in mind the company's getting 5,000 shares a day. Today, she did 98,000 shares. First piece of news in eight years, and it wasn't even a deal done. No, this is a negotiation. You could call it a letter of intent, if you will, but they didn't even put it to paper. It's not even a letter of intent. It's a handshake over at Starbucks and they're talking. That's what's going on right now. But when the next piece of news comes out and says it's a done deal, you may get another bounce out of this because a lot of people may realize that this is just negotiations. This isn't an actual merger yet. And we don't even know what the other company's worth. What do they have? What do they bring to the table besides what they do? So definitely some more DD and watching, WPKS. Put it on your watch list. It's another one of those that could have something happen to it and explode. It's just starting. Hey, 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 look at this, a bonus stock. You were gonna leave, weren't you? Right after the third stock, you leave. Come on, don't you know I do a beautiful recap after I'm all done? And I even drop some juicy tidbits in there that I didn't mention through the video. Come on, stick around. You never know what I'm going to do and what I'm going to share. So right now we are looking at ANDR. This is Andrea Electronics Core. Finished today at 2.7 cents with just about 17% gains. Now, the reason I looked at this stock was it was running. It had a lot of trades. As a matter of fact, all the stocks we looked at today had over 100 trades, which was the biggest runners on the OTC market. That's how they got picked. And this was one of them. She is on the middle tier, which means her financials are audited. She has a verified profile and a transfer agent best looking stock we've seen yet. So what do they do? Well, this is a perfect description of what they do. Andrea Electronics is a pioneer of digital audio input enhancement software, array microphone technologies, and is an industry leading developer of product solutions, which optimize the performance of voice user interface for applications such as VoIP, video conferencing, speech recognition, car computing, gaming, 3D audio recording, all that stuff. And they had news come out today. However, it's not listed here on the OTC. And I couldn't find it on Google. I'm sure it's probably out there, but I couldn't find it. Thank goodness for Twitter. And I'm gonna share that with you here in just a second. So what was the relative volume around the company? Well, she normally does 31,000. Today she did 2.6 million. That's roughly what, 70, 75 times her normal volume. Share structure, anything to brag about? Not bad, 666, <laughs> 66 6, .6 million shares in the float. It's not a bad float, even though it's 666. It's not a bad float, I have seen worse. Financials, uh, they're not doing bad. They're doing like 1.5 million each year. Quarterly, they're doing about 400,000 on the quarter. I don't see a quarterly report right here for uh, this last one, let's see what we got down here. Well, they put out an annual. So I guess the, everything is caught up. Nothing looks bad here. All right, and as I said, the news, there is no news, at least not news for today. This is from 2021 and there's nothing down below. So as I said, thank God for Twitter. This Mr. King Calls. Thank you, Mr. King Calls. I appreciate you putting this out there for us. He tells us that ANDR has been working on this for a long time. Nice to see them finally making some process in showing Apple. That's right, Apple Inc. Who made the tech? Want a nice OTC setup? This is one. So this is obviously out there somewhere on Google. I couldn't find it, but he did. This came out today. It tells us that Troutman Pepper has helped to secure a significant Federal Circuit win for Andrea Electronics Corporation, ticker ANDR, an industry leader in digital array microphones and noise reduction software. In an April 22 decision, a three-judge panel ruled in favor of Andrea Electronics' appeal from an October 2020 decision against the tech giant Apple Inc. related to its patent for noise cancellation and reduction. 
<laughs> they go on to say, we have represented Andrea Electronics for nearly a decade and continue to be inspired by their innovations and impressive technological engineering capabilities. This win protects their hard work. Now, they don't say anything else here about what Apple's responsibility is now. Are they going to be fined? This is a news press telling us that the appeal was granted and the decision was overturned. But what's the judgment? We don't see any judgment here yet. And I don't know if there is. I can't imagine that somebody gets to misuse someone else's patent and not have to pay a fine. Uh, you know, of course. So there's a very good likelihood, and I am only presuming here, there's a very good likelihood that there's going to be a judgment against Apple for this company, and they're probably going to get a payoff. And I have no clue what it's going to be. I don't know the intricacies of this case. Sounds like it's been out there a while. You may want to dive into it. So let's dive into that chart and see what it looks like. If I didn't know any better, I would think this was the Jolly Green Giants chart. But I do know better. This is ANDR. But by golly, look at that beanstalk. That is a giant. There is nothing even close to this in this six month period. Everything has been under the 200 the entire time until, what, two days ago, three days ago? She came through there looking like she should have continued. I would have thought she was going to continue, but it was a bear trap. <laughs> Boy caught everybody, fell really, really deep, and then had that serious bounce back of just a little over 100%. Technicals on the four hour do not look good. Let's come down to the 20 day one hour. We've got no 200 here. 50 day SMA is what she's sitting on. She fell away from it, came back up, fell back down to that low like three times, and then today's great news got her to shoot up fast and then fall down pretty much just as fast. And the technicals on the one hour, not good either, looking depressed. And the five day, five minute, well, the start of the day was great. She did get over 100% here from 2.3 cents to 5 cents, stayed up there for a while and then fell really fast. Just got our 20 day SMA, don't have a 50 or a 200, and she is sitting down here low. And I really don't understand it, but this is what I'm thinking, folks. As I said, you don't get away with breaking the law for free. You got to pay somebody something, whether it be time in jail or paying money to somebody. You got to pay. So I'm expecting something to come out. The next news press mentions the word judgment. This could go crazy. There was another stock, HCMC, which had sued can't remember who it was, somebody for a very large amount of money and everybody was waiting for the big payoff to come in. Same thing, it was a patent that they feel it was infringed on. But the way I seen it, that big company would just keep it tied up in court. They could afford to do that and never give any money out. But this is already a done deal. The appeal was not only granted, the decision was overturned. So now, as far as I'm concerned, we're waiting for a judgment. So you may want to put A and D R on your list and watch the news, watch the news, watch the volume, because when they come out and say anything about Apple having to pay them, hoo hoo, that will be a surge. I guarantee it. By the way, Apple fell hard today. <laughs> So, you still with me? Good. So, there you go, folks. Those were actually some of the top running stocks. Actually, the top running stocks with over 100 trades that were making gains. I would have showed you others if there were others better than them, but that's what we had today. Now, honestly, I'm spending most of my time on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange with penny stocks. Penny stocks can be anything up to $5, but I'm playing the cheap ones. 50 cents, 20 cents, a dollar. This is giving me an opportunity to make money because first off, I'm saving my $14 that it cost me to get in and out on the OTC market. Second, the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange have lots of volume and lots of investors with money. So I'm playing in the right ballpark and you don't have to stay in long. Truth is, I'm not doing a lot of swinging. I'm doing a lot of day trades. I'm in, I'm riding it up and that's it. I'm out, I take my gains and I look for another one that looks like it's ready to run. Folks, there's a lot going on right now. You got to be careful in this market. Do your due diligence. Keep up with the news. Look at the charts before you buy anything. Make sure it's looking right. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.